This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. This is a four-year series. Now, one of the things I'll sort of get out of the way at the start, and I'll cover on Tuesday when we actually get on to the details of four-year series. One of the things is that I'm going to use slightly different notation to what they teach in the maths course. Just slightly. The letters are different. I think one example is the, I'm going to call the period of a waveform T. Because we deal with signals, and signals last for a certain time. I'm going to use capital T to represent the length of a period. But I know in maths you use L. And I think the rationale for that is because the mathematicians probably think of strings, vibrating strings, from the mechanics world. And L would be for length. It's the length of a, a, a vibrational mode. Okay, It's just different notation. It's good. You kind of just get over it. Like, the notation's different. If that notation is a, is a block to sort of understanding the course, then if you kind of want to stand back and think about the underlying principles rather than thinking about the mathematical notation. So here I've got a Fourier series. X of t is a, a DC value plus uh, an infinite combination of co cosines and sines at multiples of omega naught. So this is a block of text which I don't like. I need to break that up into bullet points. Just as an aside, sort of, sort of reason you get blocks of text like this is because it matches what's in the handout. Anyway, I might just read it, because I just to hammer it home. Since it is straightforward to find a solution to an ordinary differential equation that describes a system when a sine and cosine wave is applied to the system input, then using linearity and signal decompositions, it's straightforward to find a solution when a more complicated signal is applied to the input. And that's it. Okay. This is a signal decomposition. We've, I've broken down my Fourier series into the individual terms. They get multiplied. The A's and the B's are the Fourier coefficients corresponding to the cosines and sines respectively. And these are all added up and that gives you a resulting signal. So that's nothing to do with a system. That's just a way, that's a graphical way of representing a signal. You could go into, if you could go into TL, it's TLD, and steal every single signal generator and stack them all up and set each of them, well, set the first one to a fundamental frequency and then set the others to integer multiples. You'll probably need to use the 90-degree uh, phase shift button to distinguish between the cosine and the sine. And then you take each of those outputs of each of those signal generators, put them through an op-amp, multiply them, add them all together. Uh, that would be how you would implement you know, a very bad way of implementing a Fourier series. Okay, but it's one way of doing it. So, now, that signal you can put through a linear system, and as I say, you just break it down. So, you've seen this before, that's just an example of a Fourier series. Now, in terms of how much maths do we, go, do we go into in this course? Not a huge amount. In this course, I'm going to do basic engineering mathematics, which means I ignore a lot of the technicalities. So, one technicality, as you know, is when you, if you try and represent a signal with discontinuities in, such as a square wave, when you start adding these components together, you can sort of see, okay, as, as you add the number of components, it eventually begins to approximate that square wave, but you get this ringing effect, especially at the edges. So you get this thing called Gibbs phenomenon. And that's where this ringing, if you, you can look on this side, the height of that ring, of that overshoot, actually never decreases. And that overshoot is completely predictable. And so when you've got a discontinuity, you get these overshoots at the edges, and they can become important. But that's the sort of technical detail that I'm going to skip over, because it's too detailed. You just basically need to know the basics of how do you work out the Fourier coefficients. Just to explain this diagram, and just so we're all on the same wavelength, this is a rectangular pulse. So you've got the time axis here, and it's a normalized time axis. It just means that I've, I've scaled the signals, so it's in seconds, but this rectangular pulse has a period of one second. But um, looking at that rectangular pulse, now the zero line, this could really do with a grid on it, I should really put a grid on, is right through the middle of that square block. So can anyone describe, other than the fact it's a rectangular signal, can anyone give me the key property about 
this signal here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's discontinuous. Uh, there's another key property about it which is very important. So it's a mirror image in amplitude. So you're almost there. Go on. Uh, yeah, well, it does. It does. The fact it goes between minus one and one was a little bit arbitrary, but okay. Yeah, between you, you're getting towards the answer. So yeah, y yeah. So who shouted that out? Well done, whoever sort of shouted that out. It's an odd function. Right, it's not odd as in it's weird. <laughs> it's an odd function because if you took the time at minus t and looked at the time at plus t, it's uh, the signal is uh, the opposite value. If a signal is odd, when you come to work out its Fourier series, can an odd signal have any cosine components in its decomposition? So basically, can you make a square wave out of cosine components? No? Nope. Yeah, so there's some shake of the heads. If you've got an odd signal, you cannot... Yeah, imagine you're breaking it down into, like, atoms. You can't... And they're building blocks. Imagine you've got Lego. You can't take a cosine which is an even signal and make an odd signal out of it. The blocks don't fit. So therefore, for this signal here, which is an odd signal, all the cosine components are equal to zero. And it's also, so that's why it just says the sum of the sinusoids. And it also will turn out, for this case, you'll notice that the even harmonics are also zero as well. It's only actually got odd harmonics. And that's, that's another result. Uh, for this particular signal. So this is a fundamental, omega naught. The fundamental frequency is 2 pi times F naught, where F naught is a fundamental frequency in hertz. Uh, F naught is 1 over the period. The period is 1. So this frequency here, fundamental frequency here, would be 2 pi. This will be 6, let's get inside 6 pi, 10 pi, and 14 pi, and so on. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.